Joining us now is Clark Hindelang. Clark is a really good guy, and in my estimation, he's a very brave man. I've had the opportunity to speak with him on a number of occasions in the past, never have revealed his name before now. He spent five years, and let me just mark something in my day timer that I don't want to forget about uh, Clark, because this I have committed to memory, but if I don't write it down, a month, two from now, I could forget. For five years, he was at the New York Avenue School. He was the senior union rep there as well, and he presently is a teacher at the Pennsylvania Avenue School, but he's presently not teaching your children because he's on disability at the moment after breaking a thumb while breaking up a fight at school. Isn't that interesting? I guess he's lucky that he's only on disability, you know, because, you know, breaking up a fight that can be injurious to the teacher's health now, we're learning. So joining us now is Clark. Hey, Clark, very morning, mighty brave of you. Good morning. First of all, good morning, Mr. Hurley. How are you today? I am well, and please call me Harry. Okay. All right, Harry. Um, first of all, just a uh, slight correction. I'm, on, um, I'm not on actually disability. I'm on workman's compensation leave. Um, I had surgery uh, on my right shoulder. It wasn't my thumb. On my right shoulder um, uh, exactly uh, 10 days ago, uh, and, uh, which, was, which was the result of an injury that occurred while breaking up a fight at the high school uh, approximately a little bit over a year and a half ago. All right, we know what I love? Uh, and- I love it. I, first of all, thank you for the correction. We're never, ever uh, thin-skinned about that, and we want the record to be correct, but it also demonstrates credibility that we haven't conspired uh, all the facts. So I had that wrong. I take it back. I think a lot of people consider disability like workman's comp almost one and the same, but you you specifically said what it is. So we stand corrected, and even on the injury that is involved at the moment. Did you ever break a thumb? Yeah, actually, I've never broken a thumb. Okay, anyway, somebody, somebody actually, told me you actually, broke your thumb. Go ahead. It, no, it was a, it's a torn, well, I tore my rotator cuff and my and my labrum. Even while, worse. While while breaking up a fight. Yeah, um, even but worse. But anyway, hey, do you get, by the uh, way, did you get suspended? No, I did not. Okay. Go ahead. No, I did not. And they had me on video. I actually watched the video. They showed me the video. I, they, uh, I, I actually, you know, did see what happened. It was pretty clear, you know, what happened. But anyway, the reason I'm calling and the reason I want to try to go on the record, Harry, is because of this horrible situation that has occurred to this Phil Eisenstein. Um, and uh, I've only met Phil a couple times as far as passing him in the hallway. Um, I've been friends with his father for years. Um, uh, and, um, I, I was, I was unfortunate to really never know the grandfather, but, um, but what I wanted to say is, is that, you know, my history as a teacher in Atlantic city, specifically at New York Avenue school with the breaking up of fights with the, the literal, like, literally the violence in the hallways, uh, and, um, and the administration, and I'm not here to throw anybody under the bus. I'm not here to throw Paul Spaventa under the bus. I'm not here to throw Jimmy Knox under the bus, who's the, is, who's the current principal, the current vice principal, uh, Atiba Rose. I'm here because there's been a, a, a real serious wrongdoing here, and there needs, someone needs to get to the bottom of it. Okay? Um, and the reason I'm saying that is because my experience as a senior union rep, the stuff that goes on behind the scenes, the little political conversations that go on between administration, union representatives, et cetera, um, I really believe that Paul is in the right. Um, and, and, and the reason I say that is because I know how the, 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 the board – not, not the board, that the, the administration deals with these things. So, let, let me go back a step. You said that Paul is in the right. Who are you referring to? Oh, I'm thinking of, uh, I, I meant to say uh, Phil. I the thought that's what, right. I just want to make sure, because Paul is not in the right here, in case anybody was misconstruing that. So I never like to challenge anybody. You're entitled to your opinion, you're entitled, but nobody's entitled to their own facts. And Paul is not in the clear here. Uh, he's not in the right here, rather. He, he is in the wrong and this this material has already, I believe, been proven with facts that he said things to Phil that aren't true. He never had a video of him doing slamming this kid's head against the wall. I'm telling you, I'm, I believe this guy has bought an absolute can of worms in his life if he doesn't fix this thing in a hurry. But anyhow, go ahead. Back to you. That's right, because I think the can of worms was the original story that was given by uh, Jimmy Knox and uh, T. Burroughs. Uh, and again, I don't know that for a fact, but let me tell you what is what I do know as fact. 
Okay, I think that's the important thing here. Let's forget about my opinion. Yeah, I met um, I met with uh, Paul Spaventa and Marsha Genova um, and one of the board attorneys twice in late August and early September. Uh, the reason being was because I had worked at New York Avenue School for five years. Um, I was transferred to the high school. I was at the high school for two years, and when they laid off the 240 some odd people, they had to transfer everyone around. And I got a letter in the mail that I was being transferred back to New York Avenue School. And I, number one, I couldn't believe it because um, my exit at the New York Avenue School with Jimmy Knox um, was not very good. Okay, and I was actually in fear of going back to that school. Okay, because I did not want to work in in that situation, and that's a whole other story in itself. But anyway, when I sat down with Mr. Spaventa first, with Marsha Genova and the board attorney, I explained to them, I told them information that was detrimental to the school, detrimental to the school district, um, that was fact. Okay, and Paul Spaventa said to Marsha Genova, and I quote him, I quote him because I took very accurate notes. I quote him. He said, quote, unquote, Marsha, are you aware, have you been aware of these items, this, these things that have been going on at New York Avenue School as far as fights, as far as cover-ups, as far as uh, suspensions not being documented, as far as – I could go on and on and on. Um, uh, uh, what, do you, what do you call it? The um, uh, Creating a hostile work environment, accusations from teachers – um, letters to uh, the previous um, uh, superintendent, um, Ms. Hay, uh, Mr. Nichols. Have you been aware of all this, Marsha? And Marsha said, quote, unquote, Mr. Paul, he, he called her Paul. Paul, everything Mr. Hindley just said is 100 percent right. And Paul says, well, how come you didn't how come you didn't report this to human resources? How come you didn't report this to Diane Saunders, the human resource? Um, this goes back to some of this stuff went all the way back to the previous uh, human resources manager. And Paul basically ordered Marsha, okay, ordered Marsha to start keeping records of incidents like this, not only in New York Avenue School, but in other schools. And Paul, Mr. Spaventa, he promised me and he promised Marsha that he would investigate all these allegations and either get back to us or fix them. So there's, there's, there's fact, okay? So he was aware of the fights that was going on in the school. He was aware of the teacher allegations of, um, of hostile work environment, uh, which included basically threatening teachers – that would go public, threatening teachers that would go outside the school. Let me, let me ask you this, then we have to get a quick break in, then I'm going to turn it back over to you so you can do another narrative of facts, and I appreciate you staying fact-based. I think it's very, very important, and I think this time, Clark, that we're spending is so incredibly valuable, and I will tell you that multiple members of the Board of Education have already texted me to say they will protect Clark Hindling, that nothing bad is going to happen to him by him speaking out. You're a whistleblower, by the way. Make no mistake about it. You are a whistleblower. You came on here with your full name, uh, your position, exactly who you are. It cannot be misconstrued that you're somebody else. Where you used to teach, where you teach now, that you are out on workman's comp and with a torn uh, rotator cuff and labrum and all this. Uh, so when we come back, please continue. Uh, and this meeting, ladies and gentlemen, about Phil Eisenstein is tonight. If you can stop by the Board of Education meeting, uh, if you are so inclined, uh, I always encourage people, you keep it peaceful. Uh, but I understand there are a lot of people that are going to be coming out in support of Phil Eisenstein. I hope that they have the courage to do that tonight. Sometimes people are afraid to even show up, let alone speak truth to power. But I'm very impressed with Clark because he's not, and uh, he is doing a great public service today. We're visiting with Clark Hindling who is a teacher with the Atlantic City Board of Education, Atlantic City Public School System. And, Clark, before you take it back with your fact-based fact narrative, let me ask you a, a, a rather blunt question. Sure. Do, do you either have direct knowledge or from other teachers where they know that with the way that, for example, Phil Eisenstein was treated, that the students then call out in the playground or wherever that we're going to get your job next are, are teachers – basically being terrorized by certain students, yes or no? Absolutely. 
on multiple, on, I can name multiple occasions, and let me just give you one quick one here. Um, my last year at New York Avenue School, I was assaulted by a student, okay? And I believe I told you this story once before. I was assaulted by a student. Um, I called Marsha Genova. She instructed me to go to the Atlantic City Police Station to file, it, to file a, an, an assault charge. I went and I filed the assault charge. The next morning, Jimmy Knox brought me into his office and intimidated me to, to drop the charges. Now, this is how he did it. He brought the parent in, and we were in and out of the room, and uh, Jimmy said to me, he goes, if you don't drop the charges, this woman is going to say that you attacked, you went after the student first. And Marcia Genova is a witness. She sat there through the meeting. And Marcia and I talked. I said, Marcia, I don't want this hassle. Let me just drop the damn thing. And she said, Clark, it's entirely up to you. So I went back over the, to the Atlantic City Police Department and dropped the charges because I was, I was told that if I didn't drop the charges, that I was, going to peel, I was going to be put on investigative suspension. He was going to have to call Dyfus and do an investigation. That, that's a fact. Talk about chilling. I mean, that's absolutely bone chilling. You know, somebody wrote in, they're a very uh, famous individual and a famous leader in our community. They put, this is nuts, in a text message to me. I put, yes, I know. It's nuts that it's true. That's the thing about it. This is insanity, but it's all true. And I know everything you've spoken is true because I've checked out every example that you've raised here this morning. All right, let me turn it back to you because we only have six minutes left, and I want you to have the opportunity to share from your firsthand experience Anything else that you want to uh, convey to our listeners? You need to get a group of either um, you need to get a group of administrators um, or independent, almost like a special counsel, like a special investigator. You need to get a, a, a group of people that would go into the school and not spend an hour walking around because when 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 Jimmy Knox knows that pe- people are coming to the school, he makes announcements over the the loudspeaker. I want everyone on their best behavior because uh, we're having so and so visiting the school. You know, almost like th- in in a threatening tone. It, I mean, you have to ask the teachers. It's really it's bizarre. You know, it's um, it's a story like you know when 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 mommy and daddy show up to visit your apartment. You may have to make sure that everything's cleaned up because you don't want mommy on your case. But here's the thing. You need to have a group of, of individuals come in and question the teachers. Question the teachers that are there. Ask them what's really going on in the school. And then you need to ask the 15 to 25 to 30 teachers that have left the school and gone to other schools. I, I, I believe I gave you a list of about 10 or 15 names of teachers that tra- that requested transfer out of the school because they didn't they just couldn't take it anymore. They had I've seen I saw a teacher being taken out in a stretcher a couple of years ago from having a massive anxiety attack. She was 8 months pregnant. She's still a teacher in the school. From after being in Jimmy Knox's office with a different union representative. I mean it's really it's really bizarre. And the thing is this, people just don't believe it. And the thing is this, and I want to leave it with this, as, as, as teachers in Atlantic City and the teachers that are listening, you're all going to laugh when you hear this. We all say to each other, you can't make this stuff up. No. It's impossible. You can't make this stuff right, up. Right. That's where the expression truth is stranger than fiction uh, came into play. It, it is stuff like this. Do you think, I mean, I feel it because I'm hearing from more people than I've ever heard, people that would typically remain silent for fear of reprisal. I I can only share with anybody that's listening right now, uh, if you do it the right way and you are speaking the truth or putting out the truth in whatever way you think is most effective to whatever form of the media you want to give it to, me or anybody in print, whatever, uh, I think the truth has to come out here. And although it's very unpleasant what Phil Eisenstein has been put through, something very good could end here. The end result could be very, very positive in that the whistle could be blown on some circumstances that have been allowed to exist that just were not being dealt with because either certain people were being protected or just no news is good news, even if it's terrible news, but it's not, you know, getting out. So then it didn't happen. It's one of those things where, you know, if it didn't happen, if nobody knows about it. Uh, anyhow, two minute drill before we're out of time for today, Clark. Anything you want to share in conclusion? And I would like you to make a comment. How much about the Phil Eisenstein matter do you know about? Would you say you know, know a lot about it? Uh, yes. 
Do you do you agree with me? And I, you know I know a lot about it, and I dug into this thing deeper than probably anybody that's not a, a staff member or a board member or one of the council for the Board of Education. I think I know more than so, – well, I, I'd even say I know more than most of them, actually. Even I think I know more than their attorney knows, and that's not a slight on her. She's great, but she wasn't even provided everything. Imagine not being provided a second video from a closer proximity and a better angle, and they destroyed it. That alone is going to lose it for them in the appeal if they're stupid tonight. But in the final minute, do you agree with me that Phil Eisenstein should never – I mean, he shouldn't have been suspended, let alone he should have never been terminated for doing his job. Absolutely correct. He's, this, 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 would, this should have never happened. Um, and if we had another half hour, I could tell you why it happened. And if anybody, any of the board members want to talk to me privately, Mr. Spaventa wants to re-interview me again with, um, with Mrs. Genova um, or their attorney. And Paul, I would encourage you and to the board solicitor, take up Clark on his, you know, if you don't, then you do, you know, there's these ignorant things where they don't want to know. Why wouldn't you want to know? Here's a guy that's come forward that says he has information and he'd like to you to interview him. It, it'll be very interesting if nobody ever calls you, Clark, won't it? Right. And I'll tell you, well, let me just say this. Yeah. And my friends that are listening and the teachers that know me, um, ex-students that might be listening, my integrity has never been questioned. My, and my integrity has never been questioned. People that know me know that I'm a straight shooter, um, and I, I tell the truth. And the, the only reason I'm doing this is because, you know, a lot of us don't like people. You know, it's, it's a human instinct. I don't like to see anybody lose their job because years ago, years ago, I was unemployed for a very short period of time, and it was a, it was, with, with three little babies at home. Wow. And... And, and it wasn't a very fun thing. No. Clark, to be continued, we're literally out of time.